Hey everyone, I am Jack Kai. I am a new Rubik's Speed Cubing Ambassador and I'm also a three-time world record holder in solving the uh, Rubik's Cube blindfolded, um, which is my speciality. Um, I got into cubing by a classmate who brought his cube to school and um, just solved it in class. And I think he did it in like 30 seconds or something, so I thought that was like really cool at the time and I wanted to learn how to do it too. Um, so he told me that he learns from a YouTube tutorial, so I did the same thing. I don't remember exactly how long it took me to like solve it, um, maybe like a couple of days or a week, but taking it like step by step. And yeah, eventually I got there in the end. And from then on, I was just like, cool, I can solve it like without any kind of external reference now. Uh, now what? And the obvious next step was to try to do it faster. And I think that gradual process of just trying to get it faster and faster and also looking into other types of puzzles, um, like the smaller um, two by two Rubik's cube or different methods of solving the cube, like using, um, for example, like one hand uh, or even blindfolded, uh, which is of course what I particularly found myself being interested in. So that's the kind of rabbit hole I ended up going down. So in terms of my favorite events, um, I'm obviously particularly interested in blindfolded solving, um, particularly the standard, of course, just um, three by three uh, blindfolded event. Um, there are also other events for solving the Rubik's Cube blindfolded, such as solving the bigger cubes, like the 4x4 and the 5x5 blindfolded. Um, those are a bit more, I guess, what do you call, brutal in that, like, um, there's less room for, like, error. Um, I mean, there's there's more room for you to, like, mess up. Um, and there's also an event where, um, it's kind of insane, um, but, like, you pick a certain amount of cubes, um, let's say, like, 30, and you try to solve them, like, you try to memorize them all in one go, and then you solve them all blindfolded in one go as well. Um, I hold the national record for that, which is uh, 29 cubes out of 30, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty insane, especially if you look at some of the world-class people at the event. Um, so that's one I hope to get better at, um, but in general, the blindfolded events. As for the top speed cubing tips, um, I mean, looking at it from a fairly general perspective, um, just a bunch of like practice, obviously, a bunch of patience, um, I think also making sure you're noticing like where your biggest i guess weak points are and always constantly looking for like the bottleneck of improvement um that's something that i think is really important too um on top of practice um in terms of maybe specific tips um since i'm a specialist in blindfolded solving i might go through that um for blindfold solving i guess focusing on your ability to memorize the cube efficiently as well as we call that memorization efficiently. Um, both of those are like really important and they seem to be underestimated in pretty much all levels. Um, I think some people put too much maybe emphasis on the methods um, and perhaps the algorithms themselves and not enough on you know the memorization aspect. Um, and when you really look at it, um, even during the part where you're actually doing you know all the turns and all that at um, lightning fast speed, like. A lot of that has to do with the fact that you're able to recall um, what you've memorized um, really quickly and not just, you know, fancy algorithms and whatnot. So um, that would be my tip for both um, beginners, intermediate, not both, for all kind of levels, I'd say. Hi, I'm Keaton Ellis, competitive speed solver, competition organizer, and Rubik's Cube event broadcaster from Maryland in the United States. I'm excited to say that this coming year, I'm gonna be working with Rubik's as a Rubik's ambassador, doing a lot of hosting and broadcasting for live and online events. I wanted to give a little bit of background information about myself for people that may not be familiar with who I am, or if you are familiar with who I am, uh, may not know all of my background, and hopefully you guys learn something new. I'd first like to start with you know, how I got into this. Most people, like me, started by having a Rubik's Cube on their shelf or toy closet or wherever they had their toys. I spent some time working on it, trying to make sure that it was as solved as possible and sort of got stuck somewhere. I personally was in this exact same position. I was able to solve one layer by myself, but then after that I struggled a little bit and I ended up using the little solution guide that came with the Rubik's Cube that I bought to, to learn how to solve it. Uh, the 
The guide itself is long gone, but I actually still have my first two cubes. I have since formed them into a Siamese cube, but I still have them. It's a good memory to think back on, on that time when I first learned how to solve the cube. I first learned how to speed solve, and I first really got into that in 2012 when I moved to Maryland. My high school had a bunch of top level solvers that I was really interested in trying to beat. Unfortunately, I was not able to, to beat them before they graduated. I was about half a second slower, uh, but that really pushed me to continue and solve. Um, and by the time we met up in competition a couple of years later, I was, I was faster than them. My favorite events, speed solving though, are three by three, the Rubik's cube, and solving it one-handed as well. I really like doing these. Rubik's cube speed solving is because most people do it and because it's the most competitive out there. And one-handed solving is really interesting to me because a lot of people in my life that were very close to me, both physically and personally, uh, were very into one-handed solving. And so I was really influenced by that and tried to get to it at the top level. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of my solving. I've been asked to give you guys a couple of tips and sort of break it down by beginner, intermediate and advanced sort of tips. Be persistent and know what you don't know. Those two things are very important. Being persistent translates into having the perseverance to be able to go through any sort of wall that you're facing with cubing. For beginners, that's just making sure that you've memorized all the algorithms and you sort of understand what's going on. For intermediate solvers, it means that not only are you trying to actively improve, uh, but you are taking the time to break down your own solves and say, where am I messing up? Where do I find room for improvement? And how can I do this even better? And at the advanced level, it is taking the initiative, making sure that your solutions are airtight and that you're learning algorithms to ensure that the number of moves that you're taking is less every single solve. So you're more and more efficient. And I think this can apply to pretty much every level. The specifics are going to be different based on your speed and what you do, what you know and don't know, but knowing what you don't know and being persistent will get you a lot of places and get you very, very fast. Finally, uh, as my specific niche in the community, I'm a caster. Not only do I compete at the highest level, but I like to broadcast, announce, and host at the highest level. The two, two main things that I'd like to highlight are from the World Championship in Melbourne, he does do blue. Due to my knowledge of Rue, I was actually casting uh, the Keon Mansour versus John Patrick Villanueva final. Good second block. Oh, Good seam allow. Oh, oh, that's a pause. Oh, oh, six he did it. Oh, that's eight in the lead. lead. Oh my God, he just slotted himself into first right now. 11, six, seven, eight. Six. Average, he's the Beyond first the after six. In addition to that, I'd like to highlight my hosting of Cubing at Home. Hello and welcome everyone to Cubing at Home 5 2020. We are excited to bring you our final competition of our preseason. A bunch of Cubers and I have gotten together to do Cubing at Home, which is a competition series extending into the summer, trying to make sure to replicate our large competition experiences at home. We've got a really exciting list of guests for you guys today. And so we're gonna get right to that. So we'll be right back with Scoob. The event really tries to bring the community together in a way that is difficult to do otherwise online at this exact moment. Anyway, thanks so much. And I'm excited to see you guys on Instagram live today and throughout the community otherwise. Thanks so much, everyone. Hi, welcome back to the Rubik's channel. I'm the Rubik's Cube ambassador and current reigning UK champion, George Scully. And today I'm gonna to be telling you a bit about myself um, and my work with Rubik's. I actually originally used to be into magic, like, to like magic tricks and stuff like that, and I wanted to learn some tricks regarding Rubik's Cubes. And when I asked my dad to bring some home from work, I thought these, are, these really interest me, so I might as well try and learn how to solve them as well. This has kind of been a thing this year, uh, since it's the 40th anniversary of the Cube. It's great for me to kind of to represent Rubik's um, in media appearances and in competing, and in return, they kind of give me opportunities like this. The coolest event I've ever attended is probably the pop-up event uh, for Rubik's for, for its 40th anniversary at the end of last year uh, in September, October. 
Um, and that was just kind of me teaching people how to solve a cube and putting it into this huge mosaic of Prince Harry. That was a really cool event. It's quite hard, you kind of have to build up like this kind of spatial awareness and these cognitive skills. But um, it's not like they have to already be there, which is good, so anyone can kind of learn it. So the way I did it was I just looked on YouTube and I assigned to learn a step each day. And over four days I kind of got used to like doing all these steps. And by the fifth day I could solve it in around two minutes and then I went from there. So some advice I'd give to someone starting within Cubit would be to split it up into steps uh, and try and sign a step to a, like each day or something like that. Then it allows you to be decent at each step and not have to like look back at notes or like algorithms or anything. And then you can learn it quite fast and then just keep on going, like learn more algorithms and try and have an interest in the queue which allows you to kind of work stuff out yourself. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in a future video. Hi, my name is George Scoli and today I'm going to talk about being a Rubik's ambassador as well as giving some general tips and tricks on getting faster. Um, so before I get into that, I think I should give myself a small introduction. So I've been keeping for about five years now and over that time I've got nine national records, 13 UK championship podiums and I'm also the reigning UK champion. Um, I've also had a lot of lucky opportunities in the form of media appearances, such as going on BBC Breakfast, Newsround, the BBC Christmas Lectures and LBC Radio. Something you may not know about me as well is I skateboard, but I'm slightly better at cubing. <laughs> I signed with Rubik's because they are the original Rubik's Cube, and they support a lot of activities within the speed cubing community, including competitions. People often ask me which cubes I use as an ambassador, and the answer is that I will continue to use bespoke cubes to compete. In fact, I've actually broken a national record whilst being an ambassador this year. The best advice I would give someone trying to improve is to break it down and don't overwhelm yourself with too much to learn in one go. When I first wanted to solve the cube, I actually assigned myself to learn a step each day, so by the time that I could solve the cube, I knew how to do each step really well. Also, when you get to the stage of competing, try not to take it too seriously, because this can make you nervous and not do as well in competition as you hoped. Competitions are as much about the social aspect as they are about competing. You get to spend a whole weekend with your friends, so you should make the most out of that. This mindset is definitely what helped me become the UK champion. And that's all I've got to say for today. If you got to this part of the video, thank you very much for watching, and I'm sure you'll see me on the Rubik's channel very soon. I'll be doing a live stream on the Rubik's Instagram this Friday, so be sure to tune into that. Bye. Hey guys, Bill Wang here. I'm filming this video as an introduction for my Fast Friday question and answer session, uh, which will be this Friday, July 3rd, on the Rubik's official Instagram account at 12 noon Eastern time. So a bit of background about myself as a cuber. So I'm a Canadian speed cuber and I've been cubing for 10 years and some of my biggest accomplishments in cubing have been becoming 4x4 blindfolded world champion in 2017 at the WCA Worlds and also winning the Red Bull fastest hand uh, at the 2018 Red Bull Rubik's World Championships. I've also achieved 94 national records and nine North American records, and I'm still currently eighth in the world in three by three average. At my peak, I was third in the world in three by three average. And besides this, I also have numerous other podiums in, in major competitions, especially in three by three. I've podiumed in US Nationals 2016, US Nationals 2017, and Asian Championships 2018. So, I'm going to give you guys a bit of background of how I started cubing and why I became so passionate about it. So how I started is one day my classmate brought a cube to school and he solved it in front of the class in about 30 seconds. So I found that to be very impressive, very cool. So I went out, purchased my own cube and learned how to solve it using an online tutorial. After learning how to solve it, my next goal was to become faster than my classmate. So I learned new algorithms, new methods, and uh, use the online resources available to me and I was able to achieve that in a few weeks. Now, once I was able to get faster than my classmate, I still wanted to improve more. So I kept on learning and kept on practicing because I kind of became addicted in a sense to the, uh, the, the enjoyment of improving and become, getting faster. After about a month, I also found out about WCA competitions and there happened to be one nearby uh, so I attended and that really cemented my passion for cubing. 
I not only was able to meet a lot of friends who had a similar passion as me, but I was very, very amazed by some of the top level speed cubers at the time who were solving it, solving different events so much faster than me. So that really inspired me to want to improve my level and to keep on getting faster. Now, at the beginning of my cubing career, I became very fast at two by two and big cube blindfolded very quickly. And those became my favorite events at the beginning of my cubing career. Eventually, after a couple of years, I also started getting very fast at three by three, four by four, five by five, and one handed. So I started liking those events more and practicing them more. And to this day, three by three is still probably my favorite event. And I also enjoy four by four and five by five a lot as well. Now I'll do a solve for you guys. Um, this is a Rubik's uh, Paris World Championships 2017 cube. Uh, it's very, very nice. And I think it's a great collector's item and a great cube to use. So yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Alright. It's not too good, but oh well. Yeah, so I really uh, look forward to the Q and A session, and I'll I'll catch you guys there. I uh, hope you guys have a great week. My name is Julian Sebastian. I'm a French speed cuber who specializes in 3x3 and 3x3 one-handed, in which I can really hold the European record. And I'll be your Rubik's brand ambassador starting from now. Hi everyone, I'm Sebastian Bayer. I'm the current 4x4 world record holder and the former world champion in 4x4. Hi, I'm Philip Bayer. I'm also a German speed cuber, his twin brother in fact and I am the current world champion in the 3x3 cube, former European champion and current European record holder. And as you might have already known, uh, from now on we'll be representing Rubik's as brand ambassadors. It's my fault, yeah. So, um, in 2009 I watched a TV documentary about fast German cubers and it was so impressive to me that I really wanted to do that as well. So. I wanted a cube for Christmas, and I eventually got it. Sadly, he got one as well. <laughs> I um, didn't even want one. <laughs> and yeah, that's basically how we got into cubing. If you ask our mom, she will tell a different story, but I, I think my story is true. <laughs> that was basically just because Philip and I uh, are very competitive in like everything in life, from at a very young age, but probably when we started uh, sort of to learn how to read. Uh, yeah. And yeah, at some point we just started timing, timing ourselves, and uh, obviously we always wanted to beat the other. And then we just looked online for like how to get faster cubing, and we got into like a German speed cubing forum and learned a new method, and basically every, everything started from there. Yeah, I remember a lot of fights about our times as well. And, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure if we didn't have each other to battle against, um, we wouldn't be where we are now. So that was definitely a key component because we're so competitive. Yeah, and uh, our first competition was in June 2020. Yeah, yeah and uh, I think we learned about it in that German speakers forum, right? Yeah, we, we did want to go to a competition in January first. But then it was too late and the registration closed. So, yeah, and there was a competition pretty close to us and we decided to go. Okay, so for me, definitely by far my favorite event is the regular 3x3. Um, I don't exactly know why, it just came to be. All the other events are either, either too long, like 4x4 and 5x5, you get bored when you solve that. 2x2, um, two two, it's too short, same with pyramids, square one, whatever. Um, I don't know, it's just the most interesting. To me, it seems like it's the most skill involved. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say anything, you mean luck. Um, 
And yeah, like it's why I'm the best at and I just like to do it. Um, besides that, maybe one minute is also very exciting, but it's just because it's very similar to the regular key. So yeah, that's it for me. Okay, for me it's definitely the 4x4 because uh, obviously I have uh, plenty of world records in that. And it basically started uh, shortly after I, uh, I got my first 4x4 and started learning it. And I improved really, really quickly and then I had a look on the, on the records page online and then I saw that the German national record was actually like in reach for me uh, because I was improving so quickly and then I just solely focused on 4x4 and then eventually got national records and soon after I got European records. theoretically learn the whole algorithm set in one day but you will forget it right away if you don't practice it so you should just incrementally learn algorithm by algorithm have a lot of solves try to apply the algorithms as, as often as you can and then they will just get stuck in your head and you won't forget them yeah it's all uh advanced level yeah i think i think that depending on who you ask um some people would say that we haven't reached advanced <laughs> level yet um just because in our methods we don't really employ a lot of algorithms um this might not be the optimal way for everyone what worked for us was that we just somehow developed a very good look ahead, I would say. Well, somehow uh, with a lot of practice. With a lot of practice, of course. Uh, we just stuck to uh, very few algorithms and we just kept on doing solves over solves and gradually became faster. Um, I admit that that won't work for everyone to just solve very fast with few pauses. Um, for other people, it might be better to learn a lot of algorithms once you, you're at a certain stage. But really, other than OLL, PLL, a few COLLs and winter variation, there's not really anything I use in my solves. Yeah. But like, the key, the key point is still, as for beginners and intermediates, uh, 
it's always just practice, yeah. practice, practice, practice. Don't maybe, stop. Maybe for advanced people, it's even more important because there will come a point where you don't see progression right away anymore, and at that point, you really have to stick with it because you will you will be discouraged. Um, but if you just stick with it, you will still see some improvement over time. Thank you.